Hey guys, it's Sean from SP Solo. We're gonna do something a little different today. I've got my buddy Larry coming over. He's the Pacific Northwest guru on lasering and uh, ball barring. And if you watched my last video, I was trying to do some maintenance and this machine's been making a lot of noise lately. And I know it's in the Z axis, but I'm having vibration, I think in the Y and the X, but I can't really tell. So I asked him like, would you wanna get mic'd up? And he's like, sure. So we're gonna mic him up and we're gonna do something a little different from the How We Do It series. Maybe we'll call it like, how they do it, but basically I want to share like all the trials and tribulations I go through in machining and owning my business. So uh, that's what we're going to do. He's about to get here. So with that, let's just uh, get into a uh, ball bar in this machine and figuring out what's wrong. All right. So what are you doing right so now? You got to find center. So I'll set G54 right here. And then this is, these two are magnets. And then the ball is just to set X, Y, and Z. Okay. And then, so are you just uh, going to eyeball it? No, well, I'm coming down. I, I like to get it as close as I can. This thing has quite a bit of movement, but oh yeah, okay. Being a machinist, they get real. We put this vice jaw down just so he had something to magnet on. Since this is aluminum, and then these two are magnets. It's like a little ball. It's pretty cool. So this is the magic rod right here. Ten thousand dollars in your hand right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet Harry. This is like a Harry Potter Potter wand. So. They, they've got it pretty dialed. You can use different lengths of, uh, you add these extensions. You can do, like on a big machine, you can re do a really big radius. Um, then they got this, um, it's a layered quartz piece called a, they call it zero dur as the material. It doesn't ex expand and contract with uh, temperature. And so it's, it's been calibrated to that size. So now I'm gonna put my ball bar on it. It mounts on these magnets and then, uh, once my software gets rolling here, it'll yeah, so it uh, kind of clips right into there. This is calibrated. So every morning now I've turned it on and I attach it there. So now I calibrate that to the NIST traceable. So you were saying kind of like the temperature gauge, uh, it calibrates to the temperature gauge or whatever. Well, the software, you, you give it the temperature within the building. Really, it's the machine temperature. Let's put it in here, let it equalize. So when you have, when you put the temperature gauge on there, is that Bluetooth too, or do you actually have to put in the temperature? No, in the I got to put it in. Okay. The way I use temperature when I'm calibrating with a laser and then with a ball bar, sort of two different things. With the laser, I'm adjusting the machine so that it would be perfect at 68 degrees and also perfect at other temperatures. And then, then you get a little bit of theoretical. So it, say if it's five degrees warmer than 68 in here, the laser adjusts so that the machine is bigger then if it cooled down to 68, yeah. then it would be right. Right. In 68, I remember being in a CMM shop. That's kind of, I was my last job, but they're a CMM shop before they were a machine shop and it's locked down at 68. And that oh, yeah. is the NIST standard is 68. Yep. And it happens to be 20 C. 20 C. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was always cold going in there. I'm like, oh man, this I, place, it's just I hate a, going in It's there. just a little bit chilly. <laughs> the only time we went in there is like summer when the machine shop side, everybody yeah. was oh, hey guys. sweating their balls off. I'm saying 63, that's pretty stable. So I'll put, I'll go with 63. Okay. So now I'm going to calibrate the ball bar. <clears throat> and I don't turn on my heater in here. I have my heater set at like 55, but basically when I turn the machines on and then the compressor's running, it'll jump up to in the middle of winter. It'll jump up to probably like 75, 80. So I don't want to start out hot and then be into the nineties because it gets so hot in here. So I'll attach the ball bar. All right. So you're attaching the ball bar. And it's just magnets on both ends. I'd like to rotate it just so I can feel that Set it's it. on there a little and bit. And this is a pretty cool setup because basically when you hit it with a magnet, if you crash it, it just pops off and doesn't mm -hmm. break it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if something goes wrong, uh, say you have the machine set and it kind of starts going the wrong direction. Um, I got my hand on the yeah. red button at start. Yeah. But yeah, it just falls off. Right. So. And being, being magnet too, you know, if you turn the spindle on, it's not going to whip around yeah. like an edge finder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It'll just spin on the magnet. Yeah. That would oh, just, man, that, that just gives me anxiety. I mean, you guys, machinists know about an edge finder. That stuff would be gnarly. Zing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The computer's waiting for info from the Bluetooth. You can see it's blinking there. And then when I push go, it does that straight line move and it sends, starts collecting data. And uh, we happen to be using so many words, a high feed rate today. 100, 100 inches a minute. The more standard is 39 inches a minute, um, partly because it's based on a metric system, 10 uh, meters per second or whatever that is. Gotcha, but we're doing it higher because we want it to actually 
yeah, he cuts a lot of aluminum, so I want to emulate the higher speeds. You get a little more info. Sometimes you get too much, as in you get vibration. Um, this is looking pretty good. So yeah, now it, it turned around. Now it's going the other direction. So it takes two, two, uh, two GO2s and two GO3s, uh, but it only collects for one of the rotations. It's a, it's a lead in and then a lead out. So when it finishes this circle, it'll do a straight line move to turn off, and then that's the end of the program. Showing some vibration. Circularity is three tenths, which I think about the best I've seen on a mill is two tenths. This is actually pretty good. Oh, really? Um, so yeah. <laughs> a lot of our problems. I mean, this looks, this it, looks awful. It looks like. Uh, yeah, it's vibration of, worn, of bearings. Um, so like right at first, you can see it's the dependent, it's direction dependent. So right here in the X, Y quadrant, the first 20 degrees, it's not too bad. Then you got some separation up here, back to where they're together, and then some separation here. So, so in reality, we're actually seeing it pretty accurate, but it's just got some vibration, which, you know, my, that was my thoughts. I have some weird vibrations going on. So that vibration could be... A uh, number of things, ball screw, thrust bearings, um, the guides, the uh, linear guides. Um, and then there's there's cases of the coupling, the motor coupling, and the motor itself, the bearings. Okay. And so the vibration that we're seeing could be coming from a lot of things. And so we're trying to eliminate which axis is showing most of it. So okay. we saved it. We'll come back and compare them later. Okay. Go on to the ZX. So that's the ZX going. So... And the x-axis goes 220 degrees so you got a little bit of lead in and it collects data for 180 and then it'll have a straight line move and turn oh, off crash <laughs> <laughs> when it's heading down there it just, that'd be the worst even when i started it right there it just, yeah <laughs> you got your hand by that red button this machine has never been crashed by the way i've never crashed this machine oh and uh i don't want to be the guy to do it yeah the guy the ball bar guy crashed the machine that'd be not a good video to have <laughs> no, no, no you're no. like well i found the problem <laughs> <laughs> so when you're doing this and we're diagnosing because i only happen to do the ball bar but uh i guess we'll get into like lasering if i was a laser like what yeah. more benefits would it be you know so one of the things that did show up on that first one it said scaling error Mm -hmm. So it's telling you there's a difference between X and Y. Oh, because you can then see the mismatch. That results telling me and you that it needs to be lasered. Okay. But also we can kind of look at it. Obviously, we're, we got a snapshot of the table. How much error I could take out linear mm -hmm. action, accuracy, what, how, how much error you could remove. And when you're doing the laser me. and you're lasering the machine in, what are you adjusting? Are you just adjusting? Are you doing adjusting the Ele level? Electronically. Okay, electronically. Pitch, pitch okay. comp tables, which we can take a peek at here real quick. Um, so here's the X. Um, notice it hasn't been lasered. Somebody would be. We would need to put numbers in okay, there. Okay, yeah, the correction. So at zero, you, you can't adjust zero because it's it's where yeah. it's compensating from. Right. So this is like, if you get it lasered. This is on half inch increments? Yeah. So it's across the whole span of the X and the Y, so you can adjust each position within half half, half inch. inch increments, and then you kind of like adjust as it grows and... Yeah. Again. So if you said, if you told it to move three inches and the laser mm -hmm. would measure it and say, nope, it didn't move three inches, it moved less than three inches, then you'd have a positive okay, number okay. here. For example, yeah. it would might start out zero and then it'd kind of bump up, maybe ramp up from zero. And then a lot of times you see a sine wave interesting fact yeah and i'm interested uh, to see if what mine would do because i use i use the table quite a bit and not just the center i'm yeah. sure you see guys that use the center that actually get worn out like a ball scoop oh yeah gets worn out mm -hmm. in the center where mm -hmm. mine i kind of have a machine a vice on the left and the right so i feel like it spread uses it out, yeah. spread it out great everybody should do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like not every like not some, some people that. can't even take the vice off their table because yeah. it's rusted Rust to it good, yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to do the yz uh axis so this is sending data to the computer. It's all Bluetooth. The first one, Renishaw had wires. Oh, it and, did have uh, wires? Yeah. And it was, you know, it would affect your data, and you had to be careful not to trip over it. And See right here. So this is a good stuff. indicator that if I wanted to machine some eggs, I could easily machine <laughs> eggs. I'm not sure what that all means yet, but I'm sure we'll get an explanation. 
we've shown a bit of squareness error, which is still pretty small. Um, this machine has been leveled really well. Who did it? Uh, well, <laughs> this, uh, is this practical machinist contributor, I had yeah, him come in and do yeah. it. No, really. I just, <laughs> if I get a machine, <laughs> someone, someone didn't machine it very well. I had, I had to level it really good, so the guys on the uh, you know, YouTube would be like, knew what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to yeah. question me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, it really, it really is. So I'm opening all three of them here so we can kind of see it. The three tests. So there's the three and then it'll put it here on the bigger view. So we kind of get a better look at it. Oh um, man, look at it. I can machine some potatoes too. It zoomed in pretty far. That's yeah. not bad. But it uh, does look what, yeah. So each increment is what? One here. Like I got set at one tenth. Oh, one tenth. So yeah. each increment is one tenth on there. Mm -hmm. So even though it's, like that's just one tenth between that. So like here we're getting a tenth of backlash in this area. It's direction. It might be a little bit location specific, but I believe it's direction specific. This error, um, or kind of all machine specific mm -hmm. area, not not a location. Um, so this is telling us that the worst error happened to be Y and Z. Nope, it's right at the switch over. Or wait, no, we gotta go to Y Z. Oh yeah, so it's almost three tenths here. Yeah, it's uh, which is, you know, and that's on the Y and Z. Yeah, Y and, and Z. And that kind of makes sense because I was, I was machining stuff back and forth, scanning, and it was getting some ripples, which is kind of odd. But yeah, I wasn't sure if it was the X or Y, but I could hear it in my head, you know, in my ears, yeah, like what is yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. could see it on the surface just a little bit. But when I deck, it would be super good. So I felt like, okay, it wasn't a Z problem bouncing. It was more uh, an XZ movement. Yeah. This is really, really good. I'll tell you what, this, older machine. this machine's been a good machine for yeah. me. Like it's, I like uh, it. The guides are good. Oh, yeah. Straightness, same thing. You got good straightness numbers. So what do you think it's showing us? I'm, I'm thinking bearings. Um, the vibration comes from bearings or ball screws. And this is telling us it's not the ball screw. So probably thrust bearings. I'm kind of stoked to hear that. Like I was hoping that it was just going to be the bearings. And to be honest, like since it's in the Z and the Y, I'm probably going to do the X too. Like why not just I take would. the whole thing yeah. apart and then just replace them all while I'm in there? Because once you do one, you're like, okay, it's going to be pretty easy to do the others. Let's see if you guys can hear this. It's pretty loud in the Z. Like the Y, I don't hear it in the Y, but there's certain times where I'll hear something. It's not going to run the X so you can compare it. Yeah, okay, here's the X. Smooth as silk. Yeah, nice and smooth. All right, so I think that's pretty much pretty much diagnosed. So what do you think? I, I think your screws are good. I, I, I've seen a lot of bad ball screws, and these are these are probably in still good shape. Got a lot of life left in them. Uh, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's good to hear. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you start putting, you put all the screws in here, you're going to be spending... Oh, exactly. 30, 30 you know, grand. And that's the thing. Like, I just wanted you to be like Santa and tell me that I, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you didn't bring the bearings, but I'm glad it's only the bearings. So that's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, well, cool. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. You so bet. if they guys, guys want to find you on Pacific Northwest, uh, what's your shop called? And so, yeah, it, I do travel anywhere. It will cost more to drive farther, to go farther. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> in, in fact, outside of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, um, then I'd be flying and I've got truck equipment. Yeah, so you guys uh, in Florida, if you guys want to use them, like, go ahead, but you're going to buy his, like, hotel, his flight, and his, his meals. <laughs> Your main bread and butter is lasering. Yeah, so and I that's put, put the, the laser on. The bigger five-axis, or this five-axis machines can really yeah. benefit from yeah. that. And if a five-axis machine has a linear error, it really screws up their their Yeah, axis. the rotational yeah. Uh, positioning. Finding center of rotation yeah. and all that. And so that really is a longer deal I have magnetic sensors on the, I'll put on the machine. Oh, okay. You really know the accurate temperature, the air temperature and the humidity and the, uh, it has to track all that, keep the laser accurate. Yeah. But then I'll magnet optics on to the head and on the table, go all the way from end to end on travels, put in those numbers in the pitch comp, capture it after. So that's one thing I really like. So then I can show people, hey, you had 3,000 error when I got mm -hmm. here, and now we have three yeah. cats. Yeah. I, I love finding error. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. And then usually it can make it go away. Yeah. So if it's a if it's a bulb screw that's been worn out in the middle, yeah, I can't. I can't get it all out. Yeah, yeah. And so it's I get it as best I can. Yeah. A little OCD. Yeah. So for you guys, make sure you're you're using different parts of the table. It's gonna help yeah. that ball screw last a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. You can get yours. Yeah. If you just like rotate your tires. Yep. 
So. Well, cool, Larry. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Sarkinen calibration. Yeah. And uh, is there a website or anything? Yeah, I got a website. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, a lot of people, if they just look up CNC calibration or calibrating, it's it's my name is Sarkinen calibrating. Okay. Uh, which is. Some people write me checks even that says calibration. Calibration, matter, yeah, but yeah, make sure. <laughs> that's what I do. And I kind of wish I'd use the shorter name, but yeah, it is my last is. name. So Sarkin and Calibrating, if you guys want to find them, you yeah. uh, can find them. Pacific Northwest guy, everybody uses them. So cool, appreciate yeah. you coming out. Yeah. And uh, it was great uh, having you mic'd up. And yeah, uh, fun. Next one. Yeah. All Later, right. guys. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it. All right, I just want to give another shout out to Larry. Um, what you guys don't know is we filmed this two two uh, days ago, and after I got done filming, I went to go edit the stuff and the edit the footage, and I realized I did not plug in the wire to my my audio wire to my camera, so I lost all the audio. The audio was absolutely atrocious. I couldn't fix it. I ended up contacting him, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't use this footage, and so he's like. Oh, that's all right. You know, maybe you can do a dub over or something. You know, I was gonna maybe do a foreign film dub over, but yeah, I felt bad because I basically just on the spot mic'd him up and uh, went for it. But he totally came back out today and he redid it because he had to go somewhere else to do a ball bar test. He goes, let's just reshoot it. That was pretty fun. So we got it in there. So thank you, Larry. And uh, yeah, so with that, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching and uh, the how we do it series or how they do it. And maybe it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a shop tour into Larry's shop, but he's a mobile shop, so that's pretty much what this was, a shop shop tour for uh, calibration. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one, later.